I got it. Lean back, open up. We're going to shove in a spoonful of salt. Now that'll help you. How about a spoonful of baking soda? Oh, wow, that stuff tastes good. You're probably getting kind of dry by now. So lean back. We're going to pour down a half a cup of Crisco. <laughs> and chase it down with a cup of buttermilk. You say, that would taste terrible. How about if we mix them all together first and make biscuits? Hey, now you're talking. Did you know the individual ingredients for biscuits taste lousy? But they work together for biscuits, don't they? You know, God promised everything that happens to you will work together for good if you love God. Life is so simple. Keep your heart right with God. That'll be hard to do because the heart's deceitful and desperately wicked. But you just keep your heart right and everything that happens is good. Finally, though, in chapter 38, the Lord answered Job out of a whirlwind. Boy, if a tornado starts talking to me, I'm going to pay attention. <laughs> and the Lord said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Hey, by the way, many false cults take a lot of their doctrine from the book of Job. One of Job's friends said something like, You know, the dead die and they don't know anything. Well, that's one of Job's friends saying that. It's true that they said that, but what they said was not true. Be real careful getting a doctrine from the book of Job. You know, read the verse and then say, Okay, that's interesting. Now, who said this? If it's one of Job's friends, it's true that they said it, but what they said may not be true. Just really be alert. Same thing in Ecclesiastes. That's the wisdom of man under the sun. It's not the wisdom of God above the sun. Okay? Just be real careful about getting your doctrine from those two books. Just take it very slow. God said, Who's darkening counsel by words without knowledge? God said, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Man, I read that 34 years ago as a brand new Christian, and I thought, what a dumb question. Where were you when I built the earth? How many of you were here when God built the earth? Now, kids, this is going to be complicated, okay, so listen carefully. Since you were not here when God built the earth, that means that God is older than you are. How many can figure this out with no help? Okay. Did it ever occur to you that God is also smarter than you are? Mm -hmm. Did it ever occur to you that God is stronger than you are? Mm -hmm. Did it ever occur to you that God is richer than you are? You say, Brother Hovind, everybody's richer than I are. <laughs> God certainly is. Try this one. Did it ever occur to you that nothing ever occurred to God? Things occur to me all the time. I say, wow, I never thought of that before. Did you know that never happens to God? He has already thought of everything. He even knows the under and understands the imaginations of your thoughts and mine. This is a pretty cool verse. Not only does he know your thoughts, he knows the imaginations of the thoughts. That's a whole different level. You see, you can not only think about things, you can actually think about what you're thinking about. Think about that. <laughs> the Bible says God knows your thoughts, and the Bible also says Jesus knows your thoughts. That's one of many verses that prove Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. Not just a God, like Jehovah's Witness say. He is the God in the flesh. God knows your thoughts. And get this. He loves you anyway. Wow. What a nice guy. God asked Job a question, and Job did not answer. So God asked him another one. Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Question mark. Job doesn't answer. So God asked him another one. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Did you know scientists didn't even know there were springs in the sea until 1977? God asked Job this question. Probably Job was written shortly after the flood, right about in this time, when people are still living to be 400 years old. Because Job had 10 grown kids all die and lived long enough to see his fourth generation from the new batch of kids that he got. Probably lived right about in here. No mention of the law hadn't been given yet. Most people think Job has written probably the oldest book in the Bible, but not the first one in the Bible. God asked Job question after question. He said, where is the way where light dwelleth? That's a cool verse. Light doesn't stay in a place, it's in a way. But then it says, as for darkness, where is the place thereof? Hey, did you know darkness can't move? We're the children of light, right? The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against... The gates don't move. People say, oh, hell's att Satan's attacking us. No, we're just not, we're not on the offense. It's our problem, okay? We're letting them win. 
We're the children of light. We're supposed to be on the move, folks. Anyway, but God said, By what way is the light parted, which scattereth east wind upon the earth? Now, wait a minute. Does the light cause the wind? It sure does. Ask any weatherman. The sunlight causes the ground to warm up and the air to warm up, and it causes it to expand, the air, and the wind is come from the sunlight. God said that 4,000 years ago. God said, Canst thou send lightnings? Boy, it's a good thing I can't. How many of you can think of somebody that's lucky to be alive because you can't send the lightnings? You can, I can think of several, yes, sir. God said, Can you send the lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, Here we are? Now, wait a minute. Is God telling Job electricity can be used to send a message? I believe he is, folks. That's how radio, TV, telephone, radar, microphones. Oh, yeah. God said that 4,000 years ago. God asked Job question after question after question. 84 questions by my count. Job never answered one. See, these are the kind of questions that don't need an answer. The question is designed to change the person's attitude. These are the same kind of questions you dads have to ask your kids. See, I have three kids, one of each. Kids get to a certain age and they start to get kind of cocky and they think they should make the rules around the house. The kid comes in one day and says, hey dad, listen, I believe I should be allowed to stay out to four in the morning with my friends. After all, I'm ten now. <laughs> dad says, hold on just a minute, kid. You'd like to know why you can't stay out till four in the morning. Well, son, let me ask you a couple questions here. Who pays the electric bill around this house? Who's paying for the house? Who paid for that bed you slept on last night? Who paid for those clothes you're wearing, son? Who pays for the food you eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat? Who paid for the hot water and soap you took a shower with about a month ago? <laughs> Let's just get it straight right now, son. The Bible is very clear on this topic. He who payeth the bills maketh the rules. Second Opinions, chapter 4. <laughs> you see, son? Me, dad, you kid. And if you're going to sleep under my roof and eat my food, you're going to do it my way. And when you want to do it your way, well then go get your own roof to sleep under and get your own food to eat, and you can do it your way. That's the golden rule, son. He that hath the gold maketh the rules. <laughs> Who do you think you are, kid? Where were you when we got this land and drove off to grizzly bears and walked uphill to school 40 miles in the snow, barefoot, both ways? I think God's asking Job these questions to change Job's attitude. We come to chapter 40, and God said, Behold now, behemoth. Now what on earth is a behemoth? Some reference Bibles say it could be the elephant or hippopotamus. No, it cannot be either of those. I think behemoth is the long-necked dinosaur, probably the Brachiosaurus. Actually, there are 13 different long-necked dinosaurs. The Brachiosaur, the Cetosaur, the Mementosaur, the Seismosaur, the Supersaur, the Apatosaur, the Blondosaur. <laughs> you just have to talk to her kind of slow, okay? Oh. <laughs> You'd be amazed how, many, how much hate mail I get from just that statement. It's an, I say, look, I'm blonde, my sister's blonde, my mother's blonde, my daughter's blonde, okay? I like blondes. And I like making fun of them too. Okay, so back off. If you don't like it, edit this part of the tape out, all right? <laughs> he says, Behold now, behemoth eats grass as an ox. Now people say, Hey, elephants eat grass. And my Bible says elephant. A lot of animals eat grass, okay? Look at the next verse. His strength is in his loins, his force is in the navel of his belly. The biggest part on him is his belly. They say elephants have a big belly. Yep, you're right. Hippos have a big belly. Brachiosaurus has a big belly. He has a big belly. <laughs> so does he. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next verse says, He moveth his tail like a cedar. Wait a minute. His tail's like a cedar tree? Have you ever seen an elephant's tail? <laughs> Not like a cedar tree. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a hippo tail? Not like a cedar tree. You know, before they put those comments at the bottom of the Bible, they really should be required to read the passage at least once. You know, before they comment on it. <laughs> it's not an elephant hippo, hello. Uh, it's not one of those. Anyway, the Bible says, His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He had big bones. And they did. I've got one here on the table. This is a copy of a toe bone 